tonight, we're going to go over the brain, which is part of the central nervous system. Um, when we talk about the brain, um, the brain has four divisions. This outer division, which is the largest, is called the cerebrum. If I turned it posteriorly, you can see the cerebellum. You can also see the brain stem. That's three of your divisions. Now, if you open up your brain, oh, there's one from a tag. This middle section right here is in both sides. It's called the diencephalon. So you have four divisions of the brain. The cerebrum, the largest. The cerebellum, the second largest. On the inside, your diencephalon on either side. And then your brain stem. Now these are mirror images of each other, but when you cut them in half, they look differently. So um, we're gonna go through everything slowly. Make sure you're labeling your pictures. Now, an important thing to note on the cerebrum and for the spinal cord is a couple of definitions. Anytime you use the word fissure, a fissure is a deep depression. So when we look at the two cerebral hemispheres, right here is a fissure called the sagittal, sagittal fissure. Now, on the back, to divide the cerebrum from the cerebellum, here and here is called the transverse fissure. Now, we do have one more fissure that is located on the side, and you can't see it really well on this model, so I have another model. Right here, on the side, this is called the lateral fissure, and you can see how deep it is because I'm able to push this probe in there. Now, when you look at the surface of the cerebrum, you also see shallow depressions. These shallow depressions are called sulcuses. We are gonna discuss some major sulcuses. All right, when you talk about the cerebrum, there's two cerebral hemispheres, and right here is your sagittal fissure. Now, we do divide our cerebral hemispheres into lobes. When you look at it from here, this is called your frontal lobe. On the top is your parietal lobe. On the back is your occipital lobe. And here is your temporal lobe, but there's technically five lobes. Frontal, we know for the frontal bone, parietal for the parietal bone, occipital for the occipital bone, and temporal. But when you go deep to the temporal lobe, when you go deep, there is another lobe on the inside called the insula, which means island. It's on the inside, that's the five lobes. Frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe, and insula. So, when looking at a cerebral hemisphere, is there a way to know where one lobe begins and one lobe ends? Yes. What you do is you look at the top. This right here is called the central sulcus. Your central sulcus is going to divide your frontal lobe from your parietal lobe. The central sulcus is the line that divides it here. Now your frontal and parietal lobe are divided from the temporal lobe through the lateral fissure. So that's literally the line that divides frontal and parietal from temporal. Now on the back, to divide the parietal from the occipital, this is called the parietal occipital sulcus, which divides the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. So all of this is part of the cerebrum. We've got five lobes, we've got sulcuses, and we've got fissures. Now we're gonna move to the inside. When we look at the cerebral hemispheres, literally to cut a cerebral hemisphere in half, you would have to take a knife and go through the sagittal fissure and cut through this structure right here, which is called corpus, which means body, callosum, and it's hard. So we divide your brain cerebral hemispheres by taking a scalpel 
and cutting through the corpus callosum, the corpus callosum. That's all part of the cerebrum. Now the cerebellum is pretty easy. You just need to know cerebellum. Um, when talking about the brain stem, the brain stem is broken into three major divisions. This top section is called your midbrain. This big enlarged sections is called the pons. This little section below the pons is called the medulla oblongata, just like from Water Boy. And then your spinal cord continues off of the brain stem. Um, the diencephalon. The diencephalon is broken into three major regions. This little dot right here is the thalamus. To the back, this is called your epithalamus. And then below is your hypothalamus. Now your hypothalamus is going to be connected to a gland right here called the pituitary, which is broken off of this model. So if we looked at another model, this is the diencephalon, a division. You have your thalamus, your hypothalamus, and coming off of your hypothalamus is the pituitary gland, which looks like a little cherry. Pituitary, so my students usually say pituitary to help them remember. And then in the back, towards the epithalamus, this little pink would be the pineal gland right there, which looks like a little pine cone or a little pine nut, and it basically comes this way. Okay, that's the diencephalon. You have your thalamus, hypothalamus, which would have the pituitary gland, your epithalamus with the pineal gland. Again, to review your brain stem, midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata. The last thing I really need to cover are ventricles. This right here is called the lateral ventricle. Your third ventricle would be here. So you have two cerebral hemispheres, so the first and second hemispheres, which are the lateral ventricle. Your third ventricle, and in front of the cerebellum, your fourth ventricle. And this little duct right here, which connects your ventricles or your hollow um, cavities in the brain, is called the cerebral aqueduct. And I think I covered everything. Make sure you're labeling your pictures.